Greetings, EmacsConf. Uh, my name is Matt Ray. Welcome to my session on interactive remote debugging and development with Tramp Mode. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the organizers of EmacsConf for allowing me to present. Uh, my name is Matt Ray. I've been using Emacs for about 20 years and figured it'd be fun to share some of the ways that I use Emacs in my day-to-day -day role. Um, I've been a developer and had various you know, development related roles over the years. Um, I'm currently based in Sydney, Australia, as you can probably tell from my accent. Uh, actually, I moved here about three years ago from Austin, Texas in the United States. Uh, I am Matt Ray on Twitter and IRC and GitHub and a bunch of slacks. And uh, I'm a co-host of a rambling podcast called Software Defined Talk. And if you want to subscribe, there's the link. <laughs> and I, I blog from time to time about random tech stuff uh, at mattray.dev, uh, mostly Raspberry Pi related, but uh, you know, occasional Emacs post here and there. So I've been using uh, shell mode, um, MX shell mode for about 20 years. It's always been one of the, the killer features for me within Emacs. The ability to, to capture everything I do in an editable shell has uh, has really proven invaluable time and time again, and frequently been a great way to get people interested in Emacs. You know, when when they see uh, how I use my shell, um, they're usually kind of intrigued and uh, interested. And so I'm still using Bash. You know, I, I have looked at newer shells like uh, like Z Shell or Fish Shell, uh, but they haven't really caught my eye because I've always been able to get whatever I needed out of shell mode. Um, so uh, w in my usage of shell mode, um, there are a couple settings in your Bash RC that uh, you have. Um, I've got a little clip out of mine here on the right. Uh, you can see I set the term. Um, the term is set to dumb when you're using uh, shell mode, uh, which means tools like less and more, anything that uses the pager, they're going to get confused. So uh, I typically... Um, you know, I just alias those straight to cat because they're going to get captured by uh, shell mode. Um, and uh, you know, I've got my editor set to Emacs client I and my git editor shell variable set. Uh, so commands that need to spawn an editor, they're going to connect to the Emacs server and all my Emacs sessions uh, get managed within a single window. Uh, and then I've got the shell history settings optimized a little bit, um, trying to keep out some of the uh, junk out of my bash history. Uh, and you've got to set fairly large because, you know, disk space is cheap. Uh, and I grab through that fairly frequently looking for, you know, previous commands if they're not already in my, uh, in my shell mode. Uh, so there's a link to my GitHub if you want to read through any of those things. Uh, I've got a heavily customized uh, uh, PS1. Um, let me go ahead and switch over to, to that now. So uh, this is... Uh, my my Emacs. I typically run it full screen, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start up my shell. So that's MX shell, and uh, for demo purposes, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there's my, my PS1, my, my user at machine name, time, uh, the version of Ruby that I'm using, and which branch of Git that I'm on. Um, and so within... Uh, within shell mode, uh, you still get your, your color... Um, your color highlighting, uh, you know, you, you know, pretty much anything you'd get from a regular bash. But when you do run a command, um, you know, the output is all there. Uh, so if you need to go back and search through it, if I wanted to find like, you know, my PSAXU command, um, you know, the process, or I can scroll back up and look around and see, you know, all the previous commands uh, that are there. Uh, you can turn off word wrap. Uh, if, if you prefer to have your um, uh, stuff scrolling off to the right, it does make things a little bit easier. Uh, so I've got a directory set up um, called EmacsConf for, for our demo today. And I'm going to go ahead and open a, a, just a little shell script uh, called um, hello.sh. And, you know, it just says uh, hello EmacsConf 2019 from user on hostname. So if I split my screen, run shell, go back to my shell, split the screen. Um, you can see if I run bash uh, hello sh, it says hello emacsconf 2019 from Matt Ray on clamps dot bottle dot uh, bottle brush. That's kind of my internal domain. 
So that's you know just a, a quick look around. And you know shell mode handles pretty much everything you get in a regular shell. So it handles you know standard in, standard out, uh, standard error. Um, you can script with it. It's it's just bash. You know, um, and you know your env is all set there. Uh, nothing nothing too fancy. So tramp mode is the uh, the transparent remote access multiple protocols mode. Uh, what this allows you to do uh, is is remotely edit files uh, over multiple protocols. So um, I'm going to be using SSH, but you know you could be using uh, FTP if you if you needed to. Um, I imagine there's some other protocols that I that I don't use uh, that are supported. Uh, but tramp mode's been around in Emacs for I believe since 2003. Uh, and you know there were some other modes that that uh, predated it, but uh, you know for for my purposes I use it all the time uh, with SSH. And uh, the way it works is if you want to open a file on a remote system, uh, Control X, Control F, uh, and then you know the method user at remote host and the file that you want to open. Uh, for an example, I would say you know slash SSH colon Qbert. Uh, Etsy host. If I wanted to look at um, the Etsy host file on a machine in my network called Qbert, it also supports sudo. So if uh, if you need to run as a different user or root, um, you can pass that in. And so frequently, uh, I you know use uh, sudo to to edit you know files as root or to uh, connect to machines as other users if the the user that you have is is listed in sudoers. So you can go in and and modify things remotely. So back in back in my Emacs, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show off tramp mode. So first off, I'm going to Control X, Control F, and rather than open a file in a local file system, I'm going to go to SSH. I'm going to SSH to a box called Hyper Chicken. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi, and you know we can just go ahead and open up its uh, Etsy hosts. Um, I can, you know, open a file directly, or if I want, uh, I can actually just give it a directory, and dured mode will let me, you know, navigate around and, and look at uh, files on the remote system. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting, I guess. Um, I can also, instead of uh, just SSH in as my own user, I can change it so I'm sudoing, so I'm going to pipe to sudo, uh, hyper chicken. Hopefully you can see that all right. And so now uh, I'm actually the root user. So if I wanted to, I could come in and you know let's edit our message of the day. So um, your MOTD does not get uh, displayed when you're SSHing with uh, tram mode, but um, you know I'll say you know hello EmacsConf. And you know, take all that off. So I'll open up a terminal, and now if I SSH to HyperChicken, you know, there we go. Hello, EmacsConf. All right. So yay for that. Back in Emacs. Um, so yeah, I've got my uh, well. There's my MOTD, but now I'm gonna go open up my uh, Hello SH again. You know, so it's uh just saying, hello, EmacsConf. Um, I can take this file now, and now that I've got the, the tramp mode open on the other machine, I can just go ahead and save it to the temp directory here. And now my hello sh is saved to this machine remotely. So uh, I've actually got, you know, over here on HyperChicken, I've got this file there. So that's pretty cool. So not only can uh, Tramp open files on a remote system, you know that, that's great and all, um, but I just was talking about how I use shell mode, and so I can use Tramp to open a remote shell and run from there, just like I was doing on my local workstation. So um, I like to open a remote shell and uh, name it after the buffer on the host to make it easier to identify. Um, that's one of the little tricks I use. Uh, you also are asked which you know shell path you want for your shell. Um, and then the only other kind of tip that I have is uh, you'll need to export your pager as cat again. 
Um, I had that built into my shell that doesn't usually get passed across the wire. So let's see what that looks like. So uh, I'm going to uh, control U meta X shell, which is going to open another instance. And I'm going to name this one after the machine that I'm connecting to. So I call it hyper chicken and uh, it asks for a default directory. Um, I'm going to just go to uh, to our root directory and it says what's the remote shell path uh, it tries to preset it to your path um, my local path is user local bin bash because I have a, a, a new version of bash installed in my operating system here um, so I set that to bin bash and there we have it I am now SSH into my box on uh, the remote so if I switch into temp uh, I can see there's my hello sh. I can do a ps a x u. Um, I can say who am I? You know all that that fun stuff. I'm running an SSH session on a remote box in a fully you know editable terminal, which you know that's pretty fun. Uh, and if I come back to uh, my uh, my hello sh hello dot sh. Um, there we go. Uh, hello Emacs Conf 2019 from Matt Ray on Hyper Chicken. So that's that's pretty handy. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to change it up a little bit and and talk about testing of infrastructure. So uh, for for my day job, I, I work for a, uh, a free software company called uh, Chef Software, and uh, one of the tools we use is called Test Kitchen. Uh, so what Test Kitchen is, is it's a, a testing harness to execute infrastructure code in isolation. Um, and so the way this works uh, is Test Kitchen will spin up uh, virtual machines uh, or, or Docker instances, you know, public, private clouds, whatever it may be, uh, and then uses uh, uh, your infrastructure uh, as code framework of choice, uh, MindChef, but you know, it also supports uh, Puppet, Ansible, and, and others, uh, and then runs that code on the VM that you just spun up, and then allows you to run automated tests against that. Uh, so the idea is that you're going to get a, a fast feedback loop over um, your infrastructure testing, your infrastructure code testing. And uh, you can go check out uh, uh, Test Kitchen at kitchen.ci. And uh, it's up on GitHub, uh, you know, Apache version two licensed. Uh, so go check that out. Um, and then uh, for our demo today, uh, we're going to be using Test Kitchen uh, with another popular uh, Apache license project called uh, Vagrant. So uh, Vagrant is a developer testing tool for desktop virtual machines. Um, it works with uh, VirtualBox, Docker, and uh, other uh, virtual machine providers, uh, you know, I, I think uh, VirtualBox is uh, also uh, uh, free software. Uh, you could definitely use it with Docker, which is also um, available. And uh, it just uh, stands up the virtual machines that you're using uh, through a simple configuration file uh, and gives you SSH access to it. And uh, Chef makes standardized uh, bento images available for lots of operating systems, uh, including, uh, you know, Debian, uh, Arch, uh, you know, Fedora, um, and, uh, you know, some other operating systems. And so you can go download uh, Vagrant uh, at uh, vagrantup.com. And uh, the way that you can connect to uh, your Vagrant instance is, uh, you know, command X, con uh, sorry, Control X, Control F, SSH, Vagrant is your user at 127.0.0.1 on port 2222. So that's that's kind of how Vagrant works. Okay, uh, coming back to uh, my my shell here, back on my original workstation. Um, I've got uh, I'm in my Emacs conf directory, and I've got a config file here for for Test Kitchen, so I can say Kitchen status, and I can see what's going on with uh, you know, with my uh, virtual machine. Um, so I've got a Debian instance available to me using the Vagrant driver, uh, Chef Zero Provisioner inspect uh, as my verifier and SSH as a transport. So this machine, it's not created yet. So I'm going to go ahead and say kitchen uh, create. And that's going to take a minute or two to spin that up. And so while that's happening, I'm going to take a quick 
look at our kitchen.yaml file and kind of explain how kitchen works. Um, Test Kitchen uh, has a, a you know a driver uh, that you know says, well, I'm using Vagrant. This could be uh, you know Docker, AWS, you know whatever you choose. Uh, provisioner is what we're going to use for our um, configuration management. Uh, in this case, I'm using Chef. Um, at Verifier, uh, we'll talk some more about this later. And then platforms, I can list the operating systems that I'm going to use um, by default. Uh, it's going to go to those Bento images that are really just empty, stripped down, um, ready to go base images. And so, uh, you know, they get updated um, periodically. And uh, this one's using uh, Debian Linux uh, version 10, which is, uh, you know, pretty new. And, and then we have our suites. And the suites, um, if you were doing different test scenarios, uh, you would you would set up multiple suites. And so it forms a matrix between your platforms and your suites, and that's what you can test with uh, with Kitchen. So let me go back to my shell, and you know we can see that uh, our virtual machine stood up. You know um, Vagrant uh, stood it up inside a virtual box, uh, created an SSH key, and you know connected to the box. And that machine is up and running. So now, if I want to go take a look at this machine, just like I did with, uh, you know, my uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, I can uh, Control X, Control F, uh, SSH to Vagrant at 127.0.0.1, my local host, and Vagrant's going to be running on port 2222, and I'm just going to, you know, go to uh, my root directory here. And the password, uh, the default password is Vagrant. Um, you know, a lot of security there, but, you know, this is a desktop virtualization for testing. So uh, that works just fine. And here I am on this machine. Um, and, you know, that's uh, that's pretty, pretty handy. Um, if I uh, want to open a shell on this box, uh, Control U, Meta X, Shell. Uh, to open myself uh, another shell, and I'll call this one Vagrant, and uh, default directory of slash, and we're going to go bin bash for our shell. So here I am on this machine, All right? And you know, if I go to temp, uh, there's nothing here. But if uh, if I go and open my hello sh again, I can write this one over to. Uh, yeah, you know, there. So now there's my hello sh, and I can say bash hello sh and hello emacsconf2019 from Vagrant on demo Debian 10. So coming back to uh, our infrastructure as code, if if you've got uh, infrastructure, you're going to want to test it. And so Inspec uh, is a, an Apache licensed um, open source uh, framework. Uh, for compliance as code. And uh, Inspec is a, a Ruby domain specific language uh, that has you know, a couple hundred resources for auditing um, machines, you know, servers, VMs, Docker instances, whatever, but also databases, APIs, cloud platforms. Um, it's pluggable. You can write plugins for lots of stuff. Uh, and, and it allows you to scan your machines um, for compliance. Uh, and audit them either locally or, or remotely uh, with you know statements of the policy that you'd like to see. So example here is we have a control uh, for SSH. Uh, we want to make sure that we're using SSH v2. So we've got an impact, a title, description, uh, and then the language. It you know it's it's fairly straightforward. If you see the describe sshd config protocol should equal two. You know pretty uh pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do with Inspec uh, is we're going to actually use that to test um, our VMs. Back in Emacs, uh, we're going to take a look at what that looks like. So in my Emacs Conf directory, I've got a profile here uh, that I've started, um, and it's called Hello Emacs Conf. Um, we're going to describe that the file temp hello sh should exist, it should be executable, uh, and then we'll take a look at the command output. So uh, I'll close that. And we'll just run kitchen verify, okay? And it's going to run, and oh, it fails. Uh, we see that temp hello sh should be executable. So let's switch back to our Vagrant instance, and we will chmod plus x 
our hello sh. So now if we run kitchen verify again, um, looks good, right? So our file exists, but uh, we want to check the output of the command. So going back to our Vagrant instance, uh, we see hello Emacs comp from Vagrant on demo Debian 10. So we'll comment this back in and we'll just paste that right there and uh, go see what that looks like. Kitchen verify. Oh, still not working. Um, so up here we can see our diff. Uh, oh, it's uh, Inspect is running as root, so uh, root and vagrant don't match. Uh, and then it also looks like it's truncating uh, our string. So it's not putting the host name. Uh, that's because um, the, the bash script is using our shell environment and uh, Inspect is running in a non-interactive shell. So first we will change this to say root. And you know what, we'll just, we'll come back to this Debian 10 part here in a minute. So kitchen verify. All right, so that's working. So now um, I know that uh, uh, this machine is, is done. So I can just say kitchen destroy. My Vagrant instance is gone. Um, and uh, well, let me kitchen verify it again go through that rigmarole just to, to check that my uh, my test still works. And so I've got a nice, clean, uh, pristine environment every time I run this. So, you know, I was on that Vagrant instance. I was messing around with it, uh, changing settings, um, you know, maybe uh, editing files, finding what works. Uh, and, you know, um, the machine was, was uh, tampered with, if you will. And so... Uh, with with Vagrant and Kitchen, I can just you know drop that VM and spin up a new one, uh, ready to go, and run my tests again. Oh, and look at that! So now my tests are failing again. Uh, because that file, you know, before I'd use tramp mode to save it onto that system. So if only there was some sort of configuration management tool uh, that could could help me out here. So coming back to uh, our configuration management, um, Chef. Uh, Chef is uh, another uh, Apache licensed project that uh, does infrastructure as code, also a Ruby DSL. And uh, what Chef does is it provides... Uh, language and resources for configuring servers uh, with standardized libraries for easy reuse. You know, and um, it's got a client server model. You can run standalone. Uh, you know, you can use it to manage hundreds of thousands of machines. And you know, I work with lots of customers who uh, have scale that size. And you can learn more about it, uh, Chef.io, and it's up on GitHub. And uh, you know, you can go read about all that fun stuff. So we've got our failed test here, and I'm going to now use Chef to uh, make sure that that hello sh uh, is, is in place. So uh, I've got a cookbook that I started, an example one here, and Chef stores its, its uh, code in what we call recipes. And um, we've got the file resource, and we're going to store temp hello sh. And the content is that echo hello emacs conf 2019 from user on hostname. So uh, that's, that's our script. So uh, I will come back here and I will say kitchen converge. So that's gonna have test kitchen uh, call chef on our Vagrant uh, VM and just apply that change to it. And it should be pretty fast. Um, transfer in the files, start in the client and there's our diff, All right? So it, it wrote that. So now if I say kitchen verify, uh, we now see, oh, uh, our file exists, but the permissions aren't right. So we'll come back to our recipe and uh, we'll say mode of 0755, right? Not too worried about this. So now we say kitchen converge. 
uh, when that finishes, we'll run kitchen verify. And this is, you know, there we go. Mode changed from 644 to 755. And now it's executable. Uh, the standard out uh, still doesn't match. Um, oh, because, yeah, yeah, so we're still... Uh, uh, we're still looking for the host name and still running a non-interactive shell. So how are we going to fix that, right? So that's kind of the next question. Well, I've already got this interplay between um, Emacs with Tramp on my Vagrant instance to see what you know Inspec is running. Um, I'm copying and pasting code from you know from my shell into my scripts. I've got this nice fast feedback loop between Inspec and Chef. Um, but really, at this point, I'm probably going to need to look in a debugger and figure out what's going on. So the reason I, I kind of mentioned that uh, Inspec and Chef are both uh, Ruby domain-specific languages is uh, Ruby has a really great uh, interactive debugger called Pry. Uh, and so Pry is uh, support for it's built into Chef and Inspec. And uh, what you can do is you can just drop a breakpoint into your code, uh, or you can run... Um, you know, just run Pry straight from the CLI. Um, and I've got this little snippet inside my, uh, my .emacsd uh, Ruby EL uh, that um, any place I need to drop a, uh, a debug statement, I hit uh, uh, meta, meta p d and it says require Pry, binding Pry, and drops that into my Ruby code, uh, and I'm off and running. So let's take a look at how that works. So coming back to our uh, our shell here, uh, I'm going to open the the uh, compliance profile that I've been working on, um, and just drop a breakpoint in here. So here is here's our inspect code, and I'm just going to say, hey, I'd like to take a look right here. So I'm going to drop a uh, a pry binding right there. So when my uh, when I run kitchen verify, it's going to drop me into uh, the Ruby code right there. So here we are. Uh, you can see the line numbers around where I was. Uh, you can see that uh, the next thing up is our uh, describe command. Um, and Pry's got a bunch of commands built in. I can you know, run help, and there's all sorts of fun things. I can look at the source. I can you know, poke around. I can edit variables on the fly. Uh, if I do ls, I can see the current state of my node, uh, all the methods that are there, all the instance variables, all the... Uh, uh, class variables, you know, all, all that fun stuff. Um, and if I type where am I, I can go back and see the code. And actually, you know, as, as I'm looking at this, I, I realize uh, that I'm trying to execute command and check the standard output. And what's really happening is that's not a command, it's a bash script. So um, what I need to do is go back and edit the original source. Um, and we'll change our control. So instead of being a command, um, inspect has a bash resource. So I'll just uh, comment that back out and run that and kitchen verify. You know, hey, so now it's working. And uh, the reason was I, I was using, uh, I was executing the command instead of executing a shell. Um, but you know what? This is still hard coded. So uh, let's go back in and try to make this thing more dynamic. So I'm going to put my uh, my debug statement back, or my uh, my debugger back there. So now back in Emacs, I'm going to go ahead and kick off my kitchen verify, and that's going to hit that uh, uh, debug breakpoint, and we're back inside our uh, our Ruby debugger. Uh, if I'm going to say ls, I can see uh, the various methods and variables that are uh, available to me. Um, I can see the content of uh, of my compliance profile. There's uh, you know just the raw code, uh, and because Inspec is a system auditing uh, application, it has a little bit of information about the box it's running. So um, in this context, I can call sysinfo, and this is uh, a class inside of uh, inside of Inspec that's been populated, I can call methods off it. You know, uh, Ruby is object oriented, so I can go and find out what's going on inside here. Uh, I can see we've got our FQDN um, and our model and our short. 
uh, IP address, host name, those are all probably going to be useful. So let's let's call uh, FQDN. And there's our demo, Debian 10, uh, vagrantup.com. So we don't actually want the FQDN. We want the short, uh, which is just the, the short host name. So we're going to use that. Uh, and we're going to just set a variable here uh, of uh, hello Emacs. Well, you know what? I'm not going to type this out. I'm going to go copy it because that's why I'm inside here. I don't want to type anything if I don't have to. So there we go. Let's set that, hard code that. Um, and we're going to just take out that hard coded variable and we're going to call sys info. So those uh, curly brackets, that's how uh, Ruby does uh, string substitution. And so I can just drop in that. So now I've got this expected variable set to hello emacsconf2019 from uh, root on the machine. And looking at the code, I can see, you know, I'm, I haven't gotten into my bash block yet, so I'm going to continue to, to line 12 and uh, do an ls here. And, you know, there's a whole lot of methods available to me, uh, but I know that I want to look at um, the class that's described. So describe class and says, hey, you're inside a bash command. And we're calling temp hello.sh. Well, that's great and all, but uh, what methods are available to me? So again, fully object oriented. So I can call methods off of it. And I see we've got our command there, result, standard out, standard error. Those all sound promising. Let's, let's take a look at result. And there's a struct of what came back when we, when we ran that bash command. So uh, we'll just look at the standard out. And there's, uh, there's our bash command. Um, so we'll, we'll just actually grab that string right there, right? And copy that. Um, we'll break out of that uh, spot. And uh, we'll compare this to um, the, the variable we just set. You know, is, is that expected one actually that? And hey, hey, they match. So if you recall, we just said expected inside of our uh, debugging session to uh, hello emacsconf um, with the, the variable uh, with the, the sysinfo sys short host name. So you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and reopen my control and uh, instead of having this hard coded now, um, I'm going to set. Uh, let me go grab that expected. Expected equals, and I will grab that right there, and I'll just put it as a Ruby variable. I'll take out my debug breakpoint, and instead of saying standard out should match this hard coded string now, I'm just going to say it should match expected. Okay. So this is allowing me to, you know, interactively test what works inside of a, a active inspect session, active Ruby session, copy it back into my uh, script, and and then uh, let me exit program here, and find out, you know, what works, what uh, so what works, what 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 doesn't work, and so now if I run kitchen verify, uh, we'll see that our uh, our Everything is working. I've got some nice uh, substitution of the host name there. Um, my code has been uh, debugged on the fly. And so if I kitchen destroy, that'll get rid of the VM. And if I run kitchen test, uh, it will run the whole thing over from end to end. So it'll it'll go and create my VM, uh, install Chef on it, apply the, the hello.sh file to it, set the permissions on it, uh, and then run my test. And if everything passes, will go and destroy uh, the VM because everything looks good. So this is a good way to do like regression testing, integration testing. Uh, anytime that you make some changes to your code, uh, you just wipe the whole thing and run it all again. And uh, you know, that's kind of the beauty of, of integration testing. So combining, you know, combining Tramp with shell mode and, and local desktop testing with Kitchen makes for a very fast feedback loop. Um, I can test through the shell and through Ruby without leaving Emacs, going back and forth between uh, my chef infrastructure code, my inspect compliance code. And you know, you might not be using these tools, 
uh, but this pattern of rapid development feedback should be available to you, you know, no matter what uh, what you're working with. If you're a sysadmin, you probably don't need to be using Screen or Tmux. You know, Tramp, uh, Tramp definitely does kind of the same behavior as those tools. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, you can, you know, deploy your applications into VMs or, you know, re remote machines if it's not uh, desktop virtualization. Test the behavior in clean room environments. Use the same configurations as your production environments. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's, there it is end to end. Um, it all worked again. So this was just a quick dive into shell mode, tramp, chef, inspect, and pry. Hopefully you can take some of these ideas into your own Emacs setup and your day-to-day -day workflow. I've put this demo up on GitHub. Uh, there's a link to my Emacs and bash configuration there as well. Uh, thanks again for allowing me to present. I'm available in IRC if you have any questions, uh, or if you want, you can email me, uh, emacs at mattray.dev. Thanks again.